If I had to tell the young folks anything about Combat Camel, I said they got a history of, uh, that they can look back on. I mean, I mean, Combat Camel has been around as long as war had been here. Uh, uh, we lost a lot of good people. I mean, even in Vietnam, uh, it was my time. Uh, you know, Combat Camel is probably one of the most dangerous jobs you can have in, in, in combat. We lost more people per people that we had in country than any other career field. travel. We went to where the action was. We wasn't dodging it. We were going to it. If we heard about it, we, we, we was there. I mean, we didn't hide and wait till everything was over and, and go in there about two days later. Uh, say on the, uh, on the, on the uh, Jolly Green Giant, which is a rescue helicopter, your primary job was a tail gunner. I mean, we had to be qualified on the 50 cal, which is the tail gun. We had to know how to use that. So we taking ground fire there. What would you you would do first? You would lay your camera down and you would throw down some fire. Yeah. You only take pictures when you were able to take pictures. Yeah, I remember one particular mission that, uh, and the reason I remember this mission because it was on my 21st birthday. I was flying a gunship. We were flying close to the north. It was what we called a borough, which was way up north. And I think that's the mission that we took more AAA fire than I ever taken before. We took like 950 rounds of AAA. I mean, the sky was lit up. Uh, I don't think you smell the smoke coming through the, the uh, uh, aircraft. And this voice came in from the back of my mind, you know, I don't know where it came from, but this guy told me when I was a kid, because I used to do, you know, I was kind of naughty when I was a kid, so he said, well, you know, you ain't gonna live to see 21 years old, you keep acting like that. That's probably scary as I ever did. But I made it clear when I came back home, and knowing that you captured a time in history and it's gonna preserve it forever. I mean, that's, that, that's what sold me right there, you know. I never did anything great or that important in my whole life, but that one thing that I felt like I, I went on and captured something on film that's gonna be there a lot longer than I will. We got on the island of Grenada the, the morning of the second day. Uh, and it was kind of odd, walked off the back of the airplane, and there was an urgency that, you know, I guess unless you've been in combat, you don't know what that urgency is all about. Uh, in Grenada, I think it was south of the, the runway at the airport. I went out with the 82nd Airborne. We were there in a wedge going up the hill, and I was, it wasn't a big high threat. The sweat was running down my face. And I remember just reaching up and, and trying to, you know, get the sweat out of my eye sockets so I could look through my camera and focus. Uh, and then the yelling started, and it was, you know, just in a fraction of a second. The yelling started, and then I heard the little bumblebee sound go zipping by, which, you know, is the, the bullet makes that buzzing sound as it goes by, and then you hear the boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Everybody kind of got beside a, a concrete foundation of a house, and I remember hearing, uh, I think of it now, and it's, it's a sickening sound, so it's kind of like a melon dropping. Uh, and there was a captain in the 82nd Airborne, got shot in the head, and it just, I mean, his head exploded. And it, it was, I don't know if it's the way it struck my memory, or if it's the way it really was, but everything just seemed to hang in the air. 
And then in that, you know, just when I couldn't believe it was still hanging there, it was gone. Uh, you know, the shootout ensued, the AC-130 came in, and once he got busy, it was over uh, real quick. I mean, I've never seen such accurate and devastating firepower since. I mean, it was just this ripping sound from above, and it was done. The whole hillside erupted. Everybody went up and, you know, just cleaned up. It was, it was that quick. You know, I, there's days I just thank God that, one, that I haven't seen more of that than I, I really have. Uh, no one needs to see it. I don't think it does the soul any good. And you know, when you're out somewhere and you're, you're trying to tell the young combat cameramen that are, you know, fresh out of school at Dinfos, they think, oh, yeah, I can't wait to go get in combat, nah, 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 nah. and I just want to grab them by the ear and run them outside and say, you are absolutely clueless. You have no idea what you're talking about. to document coalition forces during the ground war. You, you know you're going up against an army that's 500,000 men strong, armed with the latest Soviet technology and gear. You were scared. I mean, you, you had the fear in you. I mean, you didn't know what was going to happen. It was just about nightfall, when all of a sudden there's tracer rounds flying all over us. Sheer terror. I mean, I let go of the camera, get my gun, because I felt I was needed more as a shooter of the gun than a shooter of the camera. Everybody all right. And then all of a sudden, it was over just as, as, as quick as it started. It's almost a miracle that no one was shot with all that firing going on. The next morning, the, the Iraqis surrendered to us and it was sort of a foggy day and all of a sudden you just see these little dots coming and before you realize it you know you, you're saying wow that's 30 40 men with a white flag and then it was just a, a stream you know it's like a steady flow of people coming towards us and surrendering